Hi, this is Dr. O'Connor. Welcome to Pathways to Chemistry. In this problem here, we're told that this reaction was studied and the following rate constants were determined. So we have K is 5.03 times 10 to the negative 5 per molar per second at 15.83 degrees Celsius. And then we have another value of K at 59.75 degrees Celsius. So we're asked to use the data to calculate the activation energy, and then we're asked to determine the rate constant at 25 degrees. We'll have to calculate the activation energy first because we're going to be using the Arrhenius equation, and that is the natural log of K2 divided by K1. That's equal to the negative of the activation energy over the gas constant R, and that's multiplied by the quantity 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. And temperatures must be in Kelvin. And of course, R in this case is 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin. So we use this equation here to find the activation energy. So a couple of things that we need to do here convert the Celsius temperatures to Kelvin temperatures. This first one, 15.83 degrees Celsius, is equivalent to 288.98 Kelvin and 59.75 degrees Celsius is 332 0.9 Kelvin. So we're all set to go. What I'm going to do is solve this equation here for the activation energy before I plug anything in. And that's um, easily done. I'll go ahead and multiply both sides of the equation by R. So I end up with this. We also have our negative sign, so multiply both sides by negative R. So I have K2 over K1 times the gas constant, and then divide both sides by this quantity here. So that's going to be divided by 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. So I'm just going to go ahead and make this K1, and this here will be K2. So now I'm ready to plug in. So I have the natural log of K2, which is 6.71 times 10 to the negative 3. That's per molar per second, divided by K1 which is 5.03 times 10 to the negative 5. That's per molar per second. We'll multiply by R, 8.314 joules per mole, whoops, per Kelvin. Okay, so let's do our denominator here. And we have 1 over T2, so that corresponds to K2, that's 332.9 Kelvin, minus 1 over the temperature that corresponds to K1, which is 288.98 Kelvin. Okay, and I'm going to do the numerator first, so activation energy, don't forget that negative sign. So what we get here is 40. 0.68 and now I will take care of the denominator is equal to times 10 to the negative 4 and our activation energy then is equal to 89,105 joules per mole and this would be 89.1 kilojoules per mole. So we have our activation energy. Now part two wants us to determine the rate constant at 25 degrees Celsius and 
I'm going to go ahead and call that K2. And we want K2 at 25 degrees Celsius, which is the same as 298.15 Kelvin. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and set up my equation. Now, from up here, I can use either K1 or K2. Or I'll go ahead and use K1 in this case. So K1 then is going to be equal to 5.03 times 10 to the negative 5. So 5.03 times 10 to the negative 5. And the temperature then is going to be our temperature is 288.98 Kelvin. 288.98 Kelvin. And I'm just going to go ahead and start plugging into the equation now. So what I have is the natural log of K2, that's what we're solving for, over K1. So that's 5.03 times 10 to the negative 5. Okay, that's going to be equal to the negative of the activation energy. That's got to be in joules because our gas constant is in joules. So that's 89,105 joules per mole. And we divide that by the gas constant, so 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin. And we multiply that by... 1 over T2, that's going to T2 is 298.15 Kelvin minus T1, which is 288.98 Kelvin. And before I do anything else, I'm going to calculate this part of the equation here. So I have the natural log of K2 over or the natural log of the quantity k2 divided by 5.03 times 10 to the negative 5 and that's going to be equal to 1.14 i'm going to go ahead and put a couple of more digits in here okay so what i have to do now is take the anti-log of both sides we're dealing with the natural logarithms. I would need to apply e to both sides. And when I do that, uh, remember e to the natural log of something is just that argument. So this comes right out. That's 5.03 times 10 to the negative 5. And that's going to be e to the 1.1407. And let's see what we have here. K2 is going to be equal to 5.03 times 10 to the negative 5. Multiply that by e to the 1.1407 power. And K2 then is equal to 1.57 times 10 to the negative 4 per molar per second. So we asked, does the answer make sense? Well, let's go back up here and look. The data that we used, this here was our K1 and that was at 288.98 Kelvin and that was 5.03 times 10 to the negative 5 and we know that at 332.9 Kelvin K is 6.71 times 10 to the negative 3 and 25 degrees Celsius or 298.15 Kelvin is right is in between these two temperatures so yes, 1.57 times 10 to the negative 4 certainly seems like a reasonable answer to me. So I hope you learned a little bit about how to use the Arrhenius equation. Again, I, the key is keeping your 
decays and the corresponding temperature is straight. So if you can do that, you should be fine using the Arrhenius equation. So everybody have a great day. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to answer those questions.